and developer here at Blick Art Materials. I'm really excited to bring you this Bird of Paradise block printing project. We're going to be using Speedball water soluble block printing inks and a ready cut rubber plate to make this Bird of Paradise print. Uh, we're going to incorporate multiple different colors um, and we're going to be exploring a jigsaw method of block printing, which means that we have multiple pieces that we uh, carve away as separate elements and we bring them back together like a jigsaw puzzle to make our relief print. So I'm going to show you how to do that process here today and I hope that you use it as a, a jumping off point for other block printing projects and techniques that you might have in mind or maybe you get some ideas as you're watching here um, uh, for this demo. So uh, first things first, we have a couple of easy to follow carving templates available for you on our bundle page as well as all the products and materials that we are using here today. So go check that out. Uh, we're gonna use this as a guide to transfer the design onto this ready cut rubber plate. Ready cut has a white core and a gray top so that as you carve and you hit the white center, that's how you know you've gone far enough. I have a piece of Sorrel graphite transfer paper. I'm gonna flip it graphite side down onto the ready cut rubber and I'm just going to tack it down. on all sides just quickly and then you're going to want to take your template and you can leave it facing up so that you can see that design and then just take a regular pencil actually I can tack this down too just to make sure nothing moves and you don't need a ton of pressure but we're just going to trace this element here. Try and choose starting and end points that you're going to remember. Okay, just a pretty medium pressure. If you press down too hard, that graphite might start to get messy under there. Okay. And you want to make sure you get each of these lines. And this is exactly where you're going to carve the design out. So you'll be able to see it clearly. And we want to get these super unique signature Bird of Paradise flower petals. Make sure we incorporate these into our jigsaw design. And this is really the main element that we're going to use as a jigsaw piece. We have another element here of our foliage, which also would need to be carved out. And you just want to try to fit your all of your elements onto your one piece of ready cut so that you can save space. Okay, let's see if we got all of that information transferred over. Looks good. Maybe we missed a spot there. Let's go back. And there you go. All right, so we can take this away. Now, let's get started carving. I'm gonna take my Speedball handheld lino cutter tool and I'm using the number two nib and we're just going to uh, work our way. We're gonna make a quick um, outline, carve a quick outline around our template because we want to actually cut this away eventually, and that's going to give us a nice groove to cut along. Okay, and then using the same nib, and you're just going to pull this away. You can see how you can see the white core. 
We're gonna dig in and we're just gonna follow along the outside of the graphite line to carve all along the outside of the design. And I'm working slowly and I can easily move around these curves and edges by adjusting my angle and turning the handheld tool around the curves and it just handles them really, really easily. And we're also working on this ready cut rubber which is incredibly um, soft and smooth and easy to deal with when you're carving. So particularly if you're just starting out with block printing, I think this is a great place to start. Okay, and I'm just keeping it in place. We could tack this board down if we wanted to. Now one thing to think about is that you do want to get these inside lines, but let's work around the edge here. Remember to pick those good starting and stopping points, and that way you won't lose your spot. And I wanted to show you this part of the process in particular, because all of these edge lines inside of the design are the lines that we're going to go with for our jigsaw concept. So all of our little puzzle pieces are sitting in this design. So we're going to separate them using one of our gouging tools. Get these little details really easily here. Shake out that excess ready cut from your lino cutter. And just remember to go at a safe pace. Okay. Make sure your hand stays away from the area that you're carving. Okay, now we've got a nice outline. Now we're gonna use the same nib. We're gonna go right into the center of this design where our edge lines are using that line as a place for where you're going to take that negative space from. My graphite paper got a little smudgy. I think we were talking about that earlier. It's not a problem. It just does get a little smudgy. Okay. You want to go all the way through on those lines that you made, all the way down to the white core, which is really easy to do. Get those curves nice and easy. Even this little piece here, the details matter. All right, last piece. Then we're gonna take this away from the block it's on. All right, see how fast that was. You'll be block printing in no time. Now let's cut away our piece so that it's a little bit easier to deal with for our next step. This is just a regular pair of scissors. But we made that little gouge and it makes it 100 times easier to cut through the material. And you want to save this leftover for all of your other block print ideas so you don't have to throw it away. Still good. All right. 
So now we've got that carved. Let's change our nib and we're going to use our slicing tool. You can store your nibs here in the handle just to show you. And then screw that back on. Now I'm going to take this nib out by loosening from the top. Okay, and then while it's still open, I place the new nib and I secure that. Make sure it doesn't wiggle around. All right, now let's slice away. You want to take the whole piece away from the block. It's going to be its own little thing. It's different from your traditional block printing where you keep the design on the block. Here we have these nice little pieces that look like what they're going to be printed as. Right, and careful of these little edge lines where you might have a little extra material that tends to show up on your print. Anything that's gray is going to print, so the gray is your positive and the white is the negative space, that is. Okay, now let's carve away these flower petals, and we're getting really close. To that puzzle that we're talking about. Try and keep working away from my hands here, carving away. Nice sharp little tool that you have in the toolkit with that speedball liner lino cutter. Okay, one last little piece. Okay, now could you print this block all on its own? You sure could. And we've gone ahead and carved away our leaf because that's going to stay one piece. So, but here's the difference. So if we want to get multiple different colors, on different parts of the flower like we have in our example here, we're going to need to ink them with separate ink rollers. And we want to keep those drying times, uh, keep the ink nice and open, and keep the drying times similar so that when we go to make our print, we capture all of the colors that we've rolled onto these separate pieces. So let's go back to that idea of a jigsaw. We're going to separate these pieces and then we're going to reassemble them for our print based on the colors that we want to use. So let's take our same tool, go along those lines and grooves that you created, and you can carve away piece by piece. Okay. All right, and so here's your flower petals. Let's separate this piece here. All right, separate your stem from the flower. And I think we're going to make a couple different colors up here in this part of the bloom. Okay, get these little details sorted out, and there you go. All right, so here's your jigsaw puzzle. Now, the fun part really is getting to put all the pieces back together. And you want to uh, kind of practice that ahead of time. How am I going to, you know, approach uh, printing multiple pieces at once? So when we kind of assemble them back together, 
this is what we're going to see. And actually, I think this goes, boop. Had it right the first time. Okay, so when we put it back together, this is the design we're going to have. We're going to work on um, this mulberry paper, which is great for hand printing. And there's kind of a waxy side on the bottom, and then there's going to be an open tooth, softer side on the top. And that's the side that we're going to print on uh, by placing this overhead. So let's get ready to get started with our inking process. I've set up a little workstation here for myself, and I have this nice big piece of uh, 12 by 16 disposable palette paper here. And it's going to give me adequate space to mix a lot of different colors. And let's get that set up. Let's say we want to start by printing the leaf first. We're going to print these two elements separately. And starting with the leaf. All right, so let's talk about this eye registration concept. If we want our leaf to print, when we turn it over, we're going to see the leaf on this side. Okay, so I think that's where we have it in our initial design. Of course, you can change that around. You don't need the leaf. You could print just the leaf. Um, I would test out those different motifs. Um, I also like it at a little bit of an angle because it uh, kind of gives uh, the composition a little bit more uh, of a point of interest in the changing angles. So that's kind of nice. Lots you can do. All right, so let's get started without further ado. We're going to do a green and black gradient on this leaf before we print. It's going to be super fun. I'm going to show you how. It's a lot easier than you ever thought it was. And I have a brayer that's uh, the approximate size of the area that I'm going to be covering here. Looks like I was using this one already for this design. And we're going to take our green and black block printing inks, open them up. You're going to want some kind of palette knife um, to deal with the inks and distribute them onto your inking surface, in our case this disposable palette. I'm using the jars. The ink is nice and fresh. It stays fresh in the jars. I really like that. So I like to use these. And you don't need a ton of ink. A little goes a long way in this process, so let's put just enough down that we think we're going to need here. And then we're going to take our black ink and we're going to do the same thing. Mix it around, make sure that that medium in there is incorporated. Get a good mix. All right, black ink is always really intense. You don't need too much of it there. Okay, got a little tub of water over here that I keep my uh, inky items in so that they're easy to clean because these inks are water soluble, so you just wash the ink away. So keep a little tub of water, you can soak them, and I think you'll find it a lot easier to deal with cleaning those things up later. So I'm just rolling the ink on uh, in this kind of uh, dual color fashion. And I'm rolling out until I can kind of hear a Velcro sound, sticky sounding. And I'm rolling back and forth and that's a way to load up my brayer, get it nice and even. All right, now I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to put this down. And that is really how you can get a gradient with ease. Now I can add in a little more green ink 
bring that into the other side here. There's a beautiful forest green that happens kind of right down the middle. You want to make sure you get this loaded up. You don't want to over ink it to the point where you have a splotchy print, but you want to make sure it's definitely good and covered. That looks pretty good. Now let's do this eye registration with the open side of the paper. I'm going to go down right about here and let it fall. Now I've got this handheld barren and I'm going to smooth it over the top of this design applying even pressure. I don't want to push down way too hard. I don't want to smudge or um, make the ink pool or anything like that. I like to get around the edges here, kind of go almost like an embossing. All right, let's go ahead and pull this up just carefully. Great, we've got a really good start. Now this is natural for the block printing process. You might want to print over and over and test your designs until you get that perfect coverage. But this looks really good, so let's keep going. I'm going to set this up here for now. Let's put our print to the side. Let's get our Bird of Paradise design back forward. Now here's one that I carved earlier. I want to share a little tip or technique with you as we're doing this. You can certainly separate out um, your Bird of Paradise into multiple pieces. You can also have a little more discretion over how you carve. Either way, you're going to bring those pieces back together. The process is the same, but I wanted to share that with you as we step into this final part of the printing process. Yep, I'm bringing it down so we can see better. Can we see better now? Down more? Okay, thanks for letting me know. All right, so um, going back to this concept, you can cut away as many or as few pieces as you want. I like the idea of keeping these pieces together because they're all going to be the same color, yellow and orange. And then I've got a couple of pieces that I want to ink blue. So if you want to go um, you know, magenta to orange to yellow, you can do that by having separate pieces or using this inking process. The possibilities are endless. So just a little pro tip for you guys out there. All right, let's not move it back up. Sorry about that. Okay. So to get these inked, we do want to separate them, bring them back together, and we'll place our paper on top. So let's think about the colors that will be similar. These pieces will be blue. Can you see these? Mm -hmm. Okay. These pieces will be blue. These pieces will be yellow-ish, yellow and orange. Um, we've got a green here, and we've got a green here, and we've got a magenta here. All right, so just going to put a little bit of space in between them, but enough, uh, close enough to where I know exactly where they need to go because we do want to work kind of quickly. So we've already got our green and black gradient. Let's move on to, actually let's uh, get our inks queued up. We no longer need our black, so I'm going to get that out of the way. We're going to be using green yellow, pink, and blue. So let's get these worked in here. Easy access. All right, let's get our palette knife back out. And I'm just going to use the space that I have here to map out these different colors. So let's see, let's start with now you can also mix these colors together just like you would with paint. So if we want to make orange, we're going to mix our magenta and yellow together. Um, so it's that concept here. So let's get this mixed around. Do you want to do that solo of the green and black? 
Can we see it? This is just a regular old palette knife, but it sure comes in handy when it comes to mixing these inks. And you can see as it starts to get fully incorporated, look at that gorgeous <laughs> inky. Um, have you ever seen something so yummy looking like frosting? Okay, so let's, but don't eat it. Yep. Drop it here. Yep. All right. Yep. So let's get a little bit of pink. Okay. I think that's plenty. Now I'm going to take a different brayer. Got a little one here. Now we've got these little minis. And look how easy that's going to be to fill that space. So let's get a couple of those because these are all kind of small. So let's get a few more. All right, make some decisions here. Let's also get our, because we want to work quickly, let's go ahead and get the rest of our colors out. Let's get our blue. Go here. You go here, mapping out where we need things to go. And then our, uh, we're going to want some green. Let's use this space up here. A little more green. All right. What's our last color? What are we missing? Anything? That magenta. Let's get a little bit of that. All right, and that's a, let's do it. Let's make it pink. All right. Let's see. So let's work quickly here. All right, we're, we're getting, uh, we're going to crunch our time. And I think we're going to, let's use this, let's use this bigger one. Okay, why not? I think we're going to get a nice amount of space to make this kind of orangey hue. So I'm going to go ahead and mix these colors kind of right on the spot and just make a nice little custom blend. I mean, how fun is that? Take your primary colors, blend them right here. and put them right down. How fun is that? I love that coral color that happens when you mix the yellow and pink. A little bit of orange. Make sure you cover the whole block. Now, work quickly. Get that blue, load it up. Now you can also, to help deal with your ink drying times, because we're working on small pieces, you can use a uh, retarder gel, which we have here. So it's just a little tube. Use a little bit of that. If you're concerned about your drying times, it can help. Along the way, we've got the blue. Got a couple more colors. Let's get them on there. Oops. I like this bright, bright, bright magenta. Get it good and inky. All right, now let's get our green. It's our last color. Just kind of using what I have over here. Okay, your stem. All right, keep going. You're almost there. 
Now, you have your colors established, and we want to keep them good and open. So if you feel like you want to re-ink anything as you're reassembling your pieces, it doesn't hurt. Help keep those inks open. So we've got it here. Start placing these pieces back in order. All right, come back and get your piece of paper. Be careful because your hands are going to be inky. And let's eye, I just got a little ink on my paper as I said that. Eye the registration. Let it fall. All right, take your handheld baron. You can kind of see it coming through. I've overlapped them just a little bit. Maybe too much, maybe not enough. We'll find out. But I can always make adjustments as I go. So that's what's so much fun about this process. You can really play around with the colors, the gradients. This jigsaw method is so much fun. And there's an easy to use template to help get you started. So all these things are working together to help make your process a success. Now we wanna make sure this is all adhered. I'm using an even pressure and I'm just taking a little extra care because of all the pieces. <laughs> all right, and then carefully let's pull it away. Okay, and <laughs> carefully pull all of your pieces away and then you have your print. Amazing, I love this process. And look how bright, and I'll hold it up for you. Um, look how bright these colors turned out. Look at this beautiful coverage. How easy was that? You're going to be so pleased with this process when you enter in. And I hope you enjoyed this demo. I really enjoyed doing this jigsaw puzzle with you all. And uh, don't forget to check out that free template and the bundle page where you can get all the products. And we hope to see you at our next demonstration. We'll see you there.